Good morning, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ginger. Can you guys hear me okay today? I was having some uh, volume issues the other day, so trying to figure out. There, let's see if I can turn this up. Oh. Oh, that's going down. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can get the volume up. There we go. Good morning. Everybody can hear okay? Thumbs up. Good job. It's much better than the other day, I hope. It was very, very quiet the other day, so we were, I didn't do anything yesterday. Trying to figure this out. Anyway, we are in Romans chapter 14. It's 821. Uh, we will pick up and see if there's anybody else. You can hear good. Thanks, Ginger. Anyway, uh, prayer request. Uh, continue to pray for Jay Mitchell. Uh, he's still in the hospital. He's got about seven or eight more days, I think, nine days uh, left before he comes home from his transplant. Uh, he is uh, doing well. He's having some side effects, but uh, God's going to take care of that. Uh, remember to pray for Kathy. Uh, she passed a couple uh, uh, kidney stones yesterday. Uh, remember to pray for her mom and uh, Tom's mom and then Jackie Waller's mom. And then those who lost loved ones this last, uh, last week, we actually lift up uh, Joy, uh, her family, and then... Uh, Ball Rama family, and then L.A. Dave's uh, uh, funeral service or memorials this Saturday up north. Continue to pray for those that will be there and his family. And just, uh, there's a lot of people to pray for. Um, and we're going to be in Romans chapter 1, and, uh, chapter 14, and verse 1 here in a second. Uh, Saturday morning, we have our men's fellowship. It starts at 7.30, we'll have breakfast, and then time of devotion, and time to just uh, talk. Women have a meeting at 9, and then at 6 o'clock, we're going to have time of praise and worship. Just come and worship the Lord. So if you're available Saturday evening at 6 p.m. here at the church, we'll love to have you. And then our Sunday morning service is regular time. So uh, just pray for everyone, and let's pray and get started into, your, into God's Word. And hopefully we can make some sense of the Romans 14. Let's pray. Father, first of all, we just lift up the Balarama family to you, Lord. And, you know, uh, everything that's going on and, and, and the loss of a daughter, it, it's just hard to believe, Father. She was 23 years old, and we've known her since she was a baby. Father, I ask you right now, put your hand upon their family, comfort them, and pull them into your bosom, Lord. You know, the other ones that have lost loved ones this last week, and, you know, the Joyce family, and... Father, and then Dave and all the stuff going on up there before his memorial service. I ask you to be with them, Father, and then minister. And Lord, I ask you also to be with us as we strive to look at your word. Father, you know that the, the, those who are taking care of their family members are, are battling. I lift up Jay Mitchell to you. I lift up Pamela and the rest of the family as they take care of Jay in the hospital and uh, just get him wealthy or just get him well, Lord, healthy and just continue to minister to him. And Lord, I ask you right now as we look into your word that you give us what we stand in, biblical direction for daily living. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, Romans chapter 14, verses uh, 1 and 2. Remember, Romans 14 comes uh, right after Romans 13, right, you know, after Romans 12, all the way down. And remember, we talked about uh, who we were in Christ, how we were... Uh, turned against God and then living for the world and then uh, actually a uh, oh, wretched man that I am like Paul said uh, verse 1 and 2 of Romans 14 receive one who is weak in the faith but do not dispute over doubtful things for one believes that he may eat all things and but he who is weak eats only vegetables weak in the faith uh, you know babies are weak you know, they don't bust out the barbells and they're not, but then they have to learn to crawl before they walk. Uh, they have to learn to be fed. They just don't start eating steak. Uh, so sometimes babies are weak, but also people who are, are weak in the faith because they have not developed spiritually. Uh, it could be that they, like I said, are young uh, or they are receiving, but they're not doing anything with it. And they're not being fed spiritually either. They might be, well, they're not being fed. But there's different reasons why a person could be weak in the faith. And uh, so we need to understand, Paul says, but says, receive one who is weak. You know, just because they are not where you're at in that point in process we talk about all the time, does not mean that you cannot fellowship with them. 
but do not dispute over doubtful things. Now, doubtful things could pertain to what God is talking about. Uh, they may be weak or sick to uh, legalism. Uh, it could be just a lack of just good teaching, malnutrition, a lack of exercise. Uh, they could be bulimic Christians. They could they be taken in and, and uh, just just you know what what is those uh, bulimic the one that purges and all that stuff. So they take the stuff in and purge. Uh, you know, but it says, look what it says, over doubtful things, but he who believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetable. Now, in 1 Corinthians 8, Paul really nails down about, <coughs> oh, excuse me, <coughs> really nails down about the, the eating, you know, of uh, idols, food, give the idols, the, the Jews had a very strict, very, uh, regiment on their tradition on how to eat, what to eat. But the bottom line is this, doubtful things. What is doubtful things? Uh, if the Bible is not clear what we need to stand on, then it's doubtful. Like, there's that gray area. People like to hear there's gray areas in the Bible. There is. Uh, and so we can we can get upset over doubtful things and things that we can disagree. Uh, uh, it could be eschatology. It could be the tongue issues. It could be uh, Calvinism against the Arminianism, you know, these these things can go either way. And again, we can get ourselves in a situation where we're arguing with people over it. Let's, let's don't do that. Verse 3 and 4. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. And let him, let not him who does not eat judge him who eats. For God has received him. Who are you to judge another servant? To the own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will make be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. You know, and there was always that debate because the stuff that was being offered up in this time, some of the stuff was being offered up in, in the temples for false gods. And so the other people, I won't eat meat that's been, you know, offered to God. So they would eat it all. They'd become vegetarians and and, and they would feel like they were more righteous because of what they were doing and the sacrifice they were making. And so what we find is sometimes they become legalistic and on this stuff, and they would despise those who would eat any meat, you know. Uh, again, we clarify this stuff up in Acts when, when uh, Peter said, hey, I've never eaten anything was not unclean, and God said, everything I made is clean. So uh, we nailed that down when he was up on the rooftop there. But we're not to go around judging other people for what they eat or don't eat. Uh, it's like the cigarette issue. Some people say, man, I, I, uh, I, I don't think smoking is right. Or, you know, smoking, but me eating a double-double two or three times a day could be just as bad as a person smoking a cigarette because, you know, I could become obese. And it says, you know, there's other reasons why we don't go around judging people. It's not our place to judge. Uh, we have to be really careful with that. Let's drop down to verses 5 and 6. One person steams one day above another, another steams every day alike, that each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord, but he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord. He who gives thanks, and he who does not eat to the Lord does not eat, gives thanks also. And again, a person is looking. It's one person esteems one day better than the other. Again, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, Sunday is the day we gather. You know, one day is not better than the other. We are to serve the Lord daily. and But each person has their own conviction, their own place, and what they think in their own mind, uh, in their conscience. And they have to deal with that between them. And it, it becomes, if not careful, we become legalistic and... and put it over on other people and tell them they have to believe this and they have to be part of this. And then we become like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and, and the Sanhedrin and, and we oversee people and we try to tell people how do they have to live before God. And that's not what God wants. Uh, verse 7 through 9, Romans 14. For none of us lives to ourselves. No one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this, for to this end, Christ died and rose again. 
Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. We no longer live to ourselves. We have been bought with a price. But again, we are to minister and to witness to people. We are not to condemn people or judge people for what they're doing and how they're living. We need to make sure we are living what we're supposed to do before God. Uh, the old saying, keeping my side of the street clean is a full-time job. Uh, if we are so busy looking at what's going on in somebody else's house or what on their street looks like, we are messing up and we are putting things in a perspective that God says, no, take care of yourself. We are to live and to die unto the Lord and let God have his way and then let understand that God has bought us with a price. Good morning, Kenny. Verse 10 through 12, Romans 14. Why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt to your brother? For we all shall stand before you in the judgment seat of Christ, where it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess to God. So then, each of us give account to himself to God. You know, in, in Matthew uh, chapter, it says that the guy with the log in his eye take the speck out of his brother's eye. And, you know, that, that is so true. Uh, we walk around trying to pick apart everybody else. And again, it's easy to point out people's flaws. But again, when I look in the mirror, the bottom line is I'm looking at the person that has to make my choices, my decisions, and I'm accountable for that person. Uh, I can't be accountable for everybody else. I can point people and love people and, and, and minister to people and show them through the Word of God the things that they need to do. But if I go around judging of people all the time, what good am I? What good am I for the kingdom's sake? It says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Man, that's on God's terms. Uh, I have to give account for what I've done. And, and man, that's a full-time job. A full-time, it's a life sentence of taking care of my mistakes. And uh, it says, why do you show contempt to your brother? Why do you think you should go along trying to judge somebody and tell them what they need to do and how they need to do it when you can't even do it yourself? I mess up all the time. Uh, I am always understanding that I am at the judgment seat of God. I understand that every knee shall bow. In Isaiah 45, 20, it says, I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return to me that, that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. God's word is powerful, sharp, and two-edged sword. All I have to do is give people God's word. And then allow the Holy Spirit to work in their life. And pray that God will minister to them. And God will open their eyes. And God will show them what they need and the direction they need to go in. Good morning, Raylene. And, and then when you do that, you don't have to point out people's flaws. You don't have to point out their mistakes. You don't have to point out what they're doing. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't have to point out and say, hey, you're wrong, you're wrong. Just pray and say, man, let's say it to the Lord. Pray that God will open their eyes. We each will give account of ourselves to, before God. We all will stand at the judgment seat. Paul says some sins will, will follow them. My sins go on before me. That's where he says, I confess all my sins to him. That's where we get 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we're faithful just to confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then verse 10 says in that, it says, if we say we've not sinned, we make God a liar. Then you drop down to chapter 2. It says, my little children, these things I write you that you sin not. God's perfect will and perfect desire is that his children do not sin, that we get out of the sin business. But if we do, we have an advocate. It doesn't mean that we have this opportunity just to continue in sin. Grace may abound. We've seen that in Romans chapter 6, verse 1. No, we do Try to get out of a lifestyle that is sinful and displeasing to God. And again, sin is just missing the mark. And to him that knoweth the good and doeth it not, it is sin. So we can we like to categorize what sin is, and we like to say this is sin, this is sin, this is evil, this is terrible. But in God's sight, it's all the same. We don't comprehend that because God sees things differently. We try to categorize how bad things are. We when we say this is really bad, and this is okay down here. That little white lie is still sin. It's all equal in the sight of God. 
And we all will give account for that unless we ask him forgiveness. And then he said he will cast our sins as far as east as from the west. He said he will cast his sins into the sea of forgiveness and remember them no more. That's what I'm wanting. And so what do I need to do? I don't need to judge other people. So verse 13 says this, Therefore, let us not judge one another, but rather resolve this. Do not put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Romans tells us that in 15, 14 says this, Now I, I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convict, rebuke, ex exhort with all long-suffering teaching. Let's not judge one another, but listen, we need to make sure that when things, these doubtful things are coming, you know, we, we, we're able to share with them. I don't want to put a stomach block. I, I messed up. I put something out on Facebook uh, yesterday. It offended somebody. I deleted it. Uh, I took it down. I, I didn't mean for it to offend anybody. I was trying to to share with people uh, an opinion. Uh, again, I would never do anything to offend anybody or try to think. I'm trying to just make people aware. I don't want to put a stomach block to cause my brother or sister to have a bad opinion on me or to cause them to, to stumble. Uh, again, we don't want to do that because when we do that, we're bringing harm to the body of Christ and our desire and will is to build the body and each person is fitted. We talked about this earlier. It, you're in the body of where you're supposed to be, where God wants you to be. Uh, you know, we can't say the eye is more important than the toe. Uh, we might think in our own mind, yes, it is. I could, that way I can see. But you know what? You chop off a toe, we'll see how well you walk. It doesn't matter how well you see if you can't walk. So anyway, let's drop down to verse 14 and 15. Uh, I know and I am convinced by the Lord Jesus Christ that there is nothing unclean in itself. But to whom considers it anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy, do not destroy with your food the one whom Christ died. Again, just this is a smoking issue. We can get caught up in that because a lot of people smoke and some people say, oh, that's, that's definitely a sin. And I don't know if it's a sin or not. Uh, but if God deals with you to, to quit smoking, then you quit smoking. Uh, again, being slothful and lazy is just as bad as sin as smoking, if you want to call it sin. Uh, but it does talk about being slothful and lazy in the Bible. It doesn't say anything about smoking. <coughs> so we got to figure that out. I am convinced there is nothing unclean. Paul says, man, everything is there. It says, everything is available. I have liberty to do all things, but not all things are profitable. Uh, Again, we need to make sure we're careful. We're not causing a brother, and we're not grieving a brother by what we're doing. And again, I said I did that yesterday. I didn't mean to grieve anybody or to cause a brother to uh, have an opinion. I was just trying to put an opinion out there. It was a repost of something that was posted. And I thought, wow, this is pretty, pretty, you know, amazing that people are looking at it that way. It was just a different view, and uh, I put it out there. And it, again, I removed it because I don't want to offend my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Verse 16 through 18, as we close this thing out, getting closer. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken as, as of evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but the righteous of, of peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is faithful to God and approved by men. Again, if I do something or you do something that people can... can uh, interpret as evil or ugly, I have put a black eye on Christ, and I do that quite often. I do it with my posts, because my posts are sometimes controversial. My posts are borderline, uh, trying to make people think. Uh, good morning, Michelle. And, and my, my posts are sometimes harsh, uh, sometimes eye-opening, sometimes uh, just <laughs> sometimes just mean. And again, again i got to make sure that I am not it's not about eating and drinking. The kingdom of heaven is not about that. It is about righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Spirit. 
And if I'm grieving the Holy Spirit and somebody else, and somebody else is being hurt by something I say, then I must forgive, ask forgiveness of it, and repent of it, and I must ask for that person to make amends to them. And again, if I have done anything to offend you, please forgive me. Please bring it to my recollection, or please bring it to my understanding. Message me, email me, text me. Uh, all that information is on my on my Facebook here. I'm not hard to get away from. Come talk to me one on one. Uh, again, I would not want to do anything to harm our relationship or harm other people's relationships with with Jesus. The kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And again, we want to have the drawing of the Holy Spirit and be acceptable by what God and by men. Uh, in Christ, these things are acceptable to God and approved by men. Verse 19 through 21, you know, talking about our liberty. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one man, one may edify another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for a man who eats with, with offense. If it is it is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended by or made weak. Again, we do not want to destroy the work of God for the sake of food. Like, I'm not going to, if it offends my brother, I should not do it. Out of respect and love for him. Uh, again, there's things I do that I uh, make sure I am doing what is right. And again, it's talking about food here, but the weaker brother, the weaker vessel causing someone to stumble. Uh, all things are indeed pure. Uh, all things are not profitable. All things are have liberties for all things, but they're not profitable. It would not do me good. It's not good for some things to, to do certain things. And it says, man, if, if you're going to cause a brother to stumble and are, are as offended or as made weak, don't do it. Don't do it. We don't want our brothers and sisters to stumble. We want them to become strong. We want them to become christ like, and it's it's a difficult time, enough job just serving God without someone coming along and causing someone to stumble. Verse 23, 22 and 23 says, Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he does not eat with faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Do you have faith? Yeah. Let it be strong. Do you have strong faith? Yes. Uh, my faith is in Christ, is in God. My faith is in, in knowing that He is going to take care of me. He is going to see me through this. Uh, happy is He does not condemn Himself for what He approves. Again, I must have the clear conscience with the Holy Spirit and through, through what I do and make sure that I'm approved by what God says, what is not from faith is sin. Paul Producer says, you know, the gray areas in life, and we can judge people in the gray areas, and again, there are so many different things out there we can talk about, gray areas forever, and a lot of people say, oh no, it's black and white. Is there, nothing's black and white anymore. The Word of God does say that the Lord is black and white in certain areas, but there are certain areas that like, it's not clear on. Uh, and I'm not going to get into a long discussion, long detail with that. Again, we want to make sure that if it is not a faith, it is sin. The Bible says very good, very clear. To them that know it to do good and do it that not, it is sin. So we want to make sure we're not causing our brothers to stumble. We're not doing things that would bring harm. Uh, it talks about the weaker brother. And, and he even talks about the one that was a vegetarian, a weaker brother, because he became legalistic because he didn't want to eat meat that was offered up to idols. And he was afraid that he would defile himself. Uh, we can become very legalistic if we're not careful, uh, very condemning and very judgmental on people if they're not doing exactly what we said. Again, there are some clear areas and there's some gray areas. We must be very adamant about the things that are clear. And then there are some things that will be our uh, pretense or our, our thoughts or our direction. If it's not thus saith the Lord, there's a lot of things that the, the Jewish people started off with the Ten Commandments and they made all these other laws to make things better. They wanted to help God. I can't help God. I can cause a brother to stumble or I can cause a brother to be strong. 
And if I've offended you or hurt you in any way with any of my comments or anything that I've said or done, please contact me. Uh, please let me know because I do not intentionally want to harm anybody. That's not in my, my nature. I want to make you think. I want to make you aware of what's going on in the world. But I do not want to offend you or hurt you. Uh, good morning, Brenda. So as we look at this, we close out Romans 14. You know, Romans 8, 1 tells us there's no condemnation in Christ, and that's where I want to be. And then I'm persuaded that nothing can separate us. So again, as we close out, Romans 14, verse 23, it says, Whatever you is not from faith is sin. Again, we want to serve God in a way that is pleasing to God. I want to make sure that I'm walking and I'm helping my brothers. I'm not causing my brothers to stumble or to fall back, but I'm encouraging them and building them up. Uh, again, Romans 8, 20, says, all things work together for good to them that love God and call according to his purpose. Again, if I have offended you or hurt you in any way, I ask you for my forgiveness. If I've caused you to stumble in any way or to be upset in any way, I, have, I ask you for my forgiveness. And... Um, Contact me so I can talk to you personally. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the that we need to be strong in the word. Uh, we we can become weak if we're not in the word, and if we're not following the word, we become weak. Uh, again, thank you for letting me share Romans eight, uh, Romans fourteen, and we'll try to pick up tomorrow. If not, we'll probably might be on the road heading back. Good morning, Joe. And uh, be heading back to uh, LA, either here tonight or tomorrow, or go, go home. I'm uh, not sure yet, but uh, spend some time with my dad. Anyway, we love you guys. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for, for your word. We thank you that it's alive and powerful and sharp and two edged sword. We thank you that you are able, Father, to help us not to cause a brother to stumble. Uh, Lord, forgive me for my actions. Forgive me of my uh, abruptness, my uh, uh, just sometimes not thinking before I post. Uh, help me, Lord, just to be the man that you call me to be, to be the pastor you call me to be, the husband you call me to be, uh, just to be Christ-like. And sometimes I fail the world in that, Lord, because I become fleshly. And Lord, I'm asking forgiveness right now. And I ask you right now to minister in a way that will be amazing and we can lift you up. Because it tells us in your word, if you be lifted up, you will draw them into yourself. And that's what I desire. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, anyway, Saturday morning, 7.30, gentlemen, breakfast, women, meeting at 9. Then we're back at 6 p.m. for a time of praise and worship. Just an old school, remember the old after hour, after glow, just a time of just worshiping. If you play an instrument, you play music, then come and sing a few songs for us. Worship, let us worship with you in this time of just worshiping and just loving on the Lord. Anyway, love you guys. Uh, have a great day, and we will talk to you soon. God bless.